Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habita fillah It's well known that we would split the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam would split and that we would divide into groups and sects because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said if tarakat al-yahud ala ihta wa sab'in firqa wa if tarakat al-nasara ala thnatayn wa sab'in firqa wa satafthariku hadhi ummah ala thalatha wa sab'in firqa kulla haa fin nar ila wahida kulla min hiya ya rasulullah qala min kana Men can ala mithi wa ma can ala yi was habi al yom. The Prophet ﷺ said the Jews were breaking into 71 sects, Christians 72 sects, my ummah into 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. And they said, Who are they, Ya Rasulullah? He said, Those who are upon what I'm upon and what my companions are upon. So the Prophet ﷺ let us know that his ummah would divide, and this was from prophecy. And we find that. Yes, this ummah would divide, and we would see. The Prophet ﷺ said, "Whoever lives after me will see many differences." And again, we see many differences. We see differences amongst the youth. We see differences amongst the people. We divide. We split over individuals, and we see that this is a newly invented matter. The Prophet ﷺ said, "All bid'ah is innovation," and this is an innovation when you make al-wallah wal bara on individuals. For example, if I say you must follow Sheikh Ibrahim Rahili, you must follow Sheikh Rabi bin Hadi al Medkhali, you must follow Sheikh Muhammad bin Hadi, you must follow Sheikh. Uh, al-Madkhali, you must follow Ahmed al-Najmi, you must follow Sheikh Salim bin Fuzan, you must follow uh, Imam bin Uthameen, or whoever it may be, to make al-Wallah and al-Bara based on individuals, not based upon the haq, this is batil. And this is what the people from before us, how they went astray from the uh, even uh, the Jews and the Christians and, and going to the extent of galu of worship, of worshipping other than Allah Azza wa Jal and making wala wal bara based on that. And in fact, we found this in the sunnah of the deviants in Islam, that they did this with their leadership, they did this with their scholars, they did this with their, with uh, many others, that they took what they said to be the haq in and of itself without measuring it on the scale of truth and justice. And Islam forbids this. And this is why we have to come back to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and move away from this ta'zima ashkhas, this um, making, giving precedence and making uh, individuals to be the truth in, the, in and of themselves. I can't say, oh, my Sheikh said, and this is the haq. And if you don't take the haq, I'm going to make tabdi' of you. Meaning, if you don't take my sheikh's statement, I'm going to make call you an innovator. And if you don't uh, agree with what my sheikh said about so and so, then you're an innovator. And if you don't hate so and so, then you're an innovator. And if I see you with so and so, you're an innovator. All of this is batil. All of this is batil. And this has been propagated by certain individuals for so long that the people have taken this to be the haq over the haq. And that's why you'll see some of the youth who will say statements like Sheikh so-and-so is the greatest of the ulama and all the affairs and in such and such issue must be returned to him and this and that and the other. You see this ta'lim which is not based on haq because Sheikh so-and-so makes mistakes. You see buyukhti. He makes, he gets that which is correct and gets that which is incorrect. And this is the sunnah of Allah, that Allah made us as human beings that are frail and that we make mistakes. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Kullu ibn Adam khattah wa khayna khatayna tawahun. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that all the children of Adam make mistakes and the best of those who make mistakes or who sin are those who repent. So if we have this, if we understand that we all make mistakes, and that doesn't mean every time you hear from the Shaykh something that you have to test it and that you have to uh, scrutinize it. But you must have some tools of scrutiny. You must be able to look at it in some form to make sure that it's the truth, especially when it's a command for you to act against someone or be away from someone. If Shaykh so-and-so says, make tabdi' of this one, and that whoever sits with him and his companions are such and such, 
you have to know those you have to be able to have something to be able to make those judgments to be able to see the truth from falsehood and this is why it's so imperative that we have to restore coming back to the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Minhaj of the Salaf Salih and the Ta'zim for knowledge, for ilm and Ta'zim and, and knowledge and, and, and giving preference to knowledge and ilm that means preference to the book of Allah and preference to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam based on knowledge and basira and fiqh the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said May yirad bi din. Whenever Allah wants good for a person he gives them understanding of the religion and without fiqh fideen, you will make more mistakes than you're correct. And you will cause more facade and more wickedness and less rectification. So what I want to advise myself and my brothers and sisters to do is to seek knowledge and gain tools so that way you can see truth between batal. Those tools, the tools of knowledge, knowledge is supposed to open your eyes more and give you some more, uh, more clarity in issues. It's not supposed to close your eyes and make you a better blind follower. It's not supposed to close your eyes and make you better at ta'asab and, and better at saying, oh, brother so-and-so and sheikh so-and-so and da'i -so -and so-and-so, you know, he said this and that's the truth without measuring what he said, like having no tools to measure the truth. That amazes me how many people who have studied studied something from the Book of Allah and studied something from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they invite people to taqlid with ta'asr. They invite people to blind following and partisanship and hizbiyah. This is a, a dangerous crime and perhaps it's a wicked part of our nature that we want to follow something, we want to follow someone and we seek safety in that instead of the safety which we were created to which is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and be truthful and sincere in doing so and calling the people to that calling the people to the da'wah to Ahl Sunnah, da'wah to ila kitabi la min kitabi la wa min sunnati rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ila sunnati rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kama qala shaykhna imam muqbil bin hadhi al-wadi because that's the da'wah of Ahl Sunnah the da'wah of Ahl Sunnah is the da'wah to the truth it's a da'wah from the Qur'an to the Qur'an from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam this is what we have to be sincere of the religion is sincere advice the Prophet ﷺ said, Adina nasiha, Adina nasiha, Adina nasiha. Qalliman. And the people said, To who? He said it was sincere advice. And he said it three times. And they said, To who? The Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, and Majma'in, said this. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Lillahi, wali kitabihi, wali rasulihi, wali rasulihi, wali a'imatu muslimin wa a'amatihim. The Prophet ﷺ said, It is to Allah and His book and His messengers. And the, uh, the uh, imams of the Muslims, you know, the leaders of the Muslims and the general Muslims. So that sincerity and advising and sincerity, ikhlas, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is never abandoned. And that sincerity to follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is never abandoned. And that sincerity or that sincere advice to the imams to the uh, leaders of the Muslims is never abandoned, that we have to advise them, we have to make dua for them for their mistakes and their sinfulness and their oppression and their rectification and the sincerity, the sincere advice to the general Muslims, to the lay person, to the average brother and sister, they need advice. We need to advise one another. We need to remind one another. And that doesn't mean, you know, advising one another, it doesn't mean the one who's always, who's maybe in a position of more knowledge in general is the only one who advises. Not, we all advise one another. Perhaps so-and-so on one issue or in one situation knows more than the alam even. You know, or, or, or is correct or sees a mistake from the alam, which is clear as day. And so they advise them. So we have to advise one another. We have to love one another. The Prophet ﷺ said, Al Muslim akha Muslim, you should do ba the The Muslim is a brother to the, his mother his brother Muslim. They strengthen one another. All of this is from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All of this are kawaid or can kawaid in principles can be taken from these Nusus 
and apply it in our lives and our qa'id yudad al hizbiyah these are principles which attack the foundations of hizbiyah because al wala wal bara is to allah wa rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wal muslimin wa mu'minin and we ask allah the almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil wa sallallahu wa sallallahu wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi وسلم